One of the things that light can be used to measure is how an object is moving through space. And the way that is determined is by using what is called the Doppler shift. Now the Doppler shift can be heard in the form of how the wavelength of light changes. Or rather, the wavelength of sound changes when you hear a race car go past and it makes the very familiar narrow sound. As the car is approaching, you hear a higher pitch. As the car recedes, you hear a lower pitch. And that is because as the car is approaching, the sound waves are compressed and the closer together sound waves are, the higher the pitch that you hear. Similarly, as the car recedes, the sound waves get stretched. And the more stretched they are, the lower the pitch you hear. Light does the same thing, but it changes the wavelength of the light However, it typically does not change the color that you observe because things have to move close to the speed of light in order to see an actual change in color. In this case, we're looking at a star. When the star is at rest, the star emits light at a particular wavelength. And so in this particular case we're going to say it's a yellowish star and so most of the light is emitted in the yellow part of the spectrum. Now if we took the light from that star and put it through a prism we would see that in fact there are absorption lines associated with elements in the star and this pattern might be what we see. So these lines appear in particular places within the spectrum when the star is not moving. But what if the star is moving? Well in the first case we see a star moving away that has the effect of stretching the wave out and forming a longer wavelength. Now notice the wavelength does not change with position. It is a constant wavelength. It is just longer than our original wavelength. So because the wavelength is longer, and the longer wavelength end of the spectrum is the red end of the spectrum, we call that phenomenon a red shift. Now what that means is in our spectrum, those same lines that we saw before have now shifted closer to the red end of the spectrum. So all our lines have shifted down towards the red end of the spectrum. The star is still going to look yellow. It's not going to change the color of the star. It's just going to change the position where we see these lines in our absorption spectrum. Similarly, if the star is moving towards us, then the waves get closer together. And so, again, the actual wave spacing stays the same throughout, but the spacing in each case is shorter than our original. 
And because blue is the short wavelength end of the spectrum, we call that a blue shift. And again, it doesn't look blue, but what's happened is all of our spectral lines have shifted towards the blue end of the spectrum. So, which way the lines move determines which way the star moves. So in a red shift, we're going to longer wavelengths and that occurs when the object is moving away. If it is a blue shift, Then we're going to observe shorter wavelengths and that occurs when the object is moving towards us. Now that tells us which way our object is moving, but what about how fast the object is moving? In that case it depends upon the size of the shift. If it is a large shift, that is the lines have moved quite a bit, then that means it is moving fast. If it is a small shift, then the lines have not changed position very much relative to the at rest position, and that means it is moving slow. Now this can mean either towards or away. So you can have a large shift towards the red where all our lines move a long distance towards the red or you can have a small shift towards the red where the lines don't move very far at all. So a larger shift towards the red would mean moving faster away from us. A small shift towards the red, towards longer wavelengths, would mean an object moving slowly away from us. Similarly, a large shift towards the blue would be an object moving quickly towards us, which would give us a shorter wavelength. A small shift towards the blue would be an object moving slowly towards us, but still a shorter wavelength. It's just not shorter by as much. So let's say this wavelength is at 450 nanometers. If we observe it at 449 nanometers, then that is a shorter wavelength. That means it is moving towards us, but it's not moving terribly quickly because that is a small change. If we instead observed it at 435 nanometers, that's much shorter. It's still coming towards us because it's a shorter wavelength, but it's coming towards us at a much faster speed. Similarly, if we observe that wavelength at 451 nanometers, that's a longer wavelength. That means it's moving away from us, but it hasn't changed by a lot, so it is moving slowly. But if we observe it at 465 nanometers, that is a large change to a longer wavelength, so that is moving away from us at a much faster speed.